Hello, my name is Manisha Lat Gupta and I am the founder of Ananda Permaculture Project. I am back here with a series of new videos around lime as a construction material. I have done this series in partnership with Malvika Mehta who is the founder of M Lime. Now you are aware that we have built ourselves a sustainable house made of rammed earth, lime and stone. One of the materials that we were quite worried about using was lime. And that is because we had absolutely no experience of making anything with lime. Uh, neither did we have any access to artisans, advisors or even a good source of material to use lime as a construction material. We knew that we needed a lot of guidance, a lot of training, uh, a lot of subject matter expertise from someone as we went about building with Lime. And in Malvika, we found the right person to handhold us through this process. I'm Malvika and I'm trained as an architect. And I encountered Lime for the first time in 2016 when I started the work of restoring my family's ancestral Haveli home in Rajasthan. Through that process, I simultaneously realized what a wonderful, unique living experience it is. And at the same time, I realized what a painful site practice it is to work with Lyme. As an architect, we expect our on-site practices to be streamlined, to be efficient, to be time bound and to be very consistent and we expect um, ratios to help us deliver a very predictable result. On the other hand, practice with Lime, it's an artisanal workflow which means that we, every batch has its own behavior. We therefore end up depending on the intuition of the carrier, of the work, worker on site and we hope for the best when it comes to consistent results. The reason this practice exists this way is because very little has changed from its 300 year old version. 300 years ago it was normal to build a building across 10 years. It was normal to prepare material for 3 years. Buildings were crafted. Today they are constructed. Mm -hmm. And this material has unfortunately, the site practice of it has not made the leap to this century, which is why it becomes an absolutely niche elite workflow that is only used when it is deemed absolutely essential. We knew that we would face many challenges as we went about doing this work. We were already building with rammed earth, uh, a technique which was not uh, used in this area before us uh, and now we were going to start working with line where we did not even have artisans who could do this work. We knew there would be challenges in finding the right material, training people, uh, giving it the time that it takes to actually set, uh, learning to uh, create a standard SOP and finally motivating our artisanal team to um, find the energy and the enthusiasm to work with line. At the same time, I was living in this building. I was living in a small section while restoring the other, other section of it. And I realized the experience across days, across the hours of the day, across seasons, um, changing humidities, changing temperatures, is completely unlike the kind of cement, generic cement standard box that I grew up in like pretty much everybody else. So the, the big differences were of course better temperature regulation, better humidity regulation, therefore better thermal comfort altogether, better acoustic regulation as well. And then the subtler differences I found, fewer mosquitoes because literally mosquitoes cannot lay eggs on lime walls. I realized that lime was probably absorbing a lot of electromagnetic radiation. I actually began realizing I can expect so much more from my built environment. There is an in-between between the cement box and living in the forest. And we personally had no first-hand experience of living in a structure where lime had been used as a primary construction material. But reading about it, 
and listening to Malvika talk about her experience living in her ancestral Haveli really gave us the confidence that this is the way we should go to. After spending such a long time investing in Ananda to build a perfect habitat for ourselves, we didn't think we should settle for anything less than a pure, uh, non-toxic living environment which uh, lime as a construction material could give to us. The pain that I experienced, which I think is a shared experience for many, is that it's a non-standard material. The quality and the supply chain of what is available as lime in the market today is so wide that for a, even a trained person like an architect or an engineer, let alone somebody who is building a first-time house, who is new to construction, it becomes very difficult to simply trust the process, to find the starting point and to lay down an SOP. You're literally having to lay down an SOP from scratch for your site. And this was fine 300 years ago because there were master craftsmen. Now that ecosystem of knowledge has broken down. And so as someone who wants to use lime, we are basically at sea. Uh, we had to um, understand the material in terms of what additives to add in it, uh, when would something uh, cure, in what time frame. So there was a lot of new uh, artisanal knowledge that we actually had to integrate and uh, put out as a standard process within our construction process. Especially in India, our knowledge of working with lime is still contained in vernacular traditions and in oral traditions. In Rajasthan, in Mewari, there is a saying that every 40 villages, the recipe of lime changes. And there, because the raw material changes and the other supporting compatible ecosystem of materials, whether it's earth or mud or, you know, stone, that, that's changing. So how does one access this knowledge? So really what we are trying to do at M-Lime is affect the supply chain. We start with manufacturing. Rather, we start with writing a specification sheet of what we deem as a high quality, consistent, predictable fat line binder ready to use for constructions. And we then go about manufacturing this binder in the most precise manner that we know how. Every bag is identical. So every volume, every tasla or tagari that you bring out on your construction site will be identical. When the line binder is consistent, the architect and the engineer can use their tools of specification, ratios and create context specific, engineered specifications using line on a scalable manner and they can trickle that down to the karigar on site, create an easy to manage workflow. In the rest of the videos in this series, you will learn more about lime as a construction material. You will find out how lime can be used as mortar, as surface finishes, how we can use polished lime in floors, uh, the pros and cons of lime vis-a-vis -vis, uh, Portland cement and why lime is a sustainable material which can last for centuries without putting a burden on our planet. I hope you are eagerly looking forward to the rest of the videos in this series and if you are interested in them, do subscribe to our YouTube channel. And also follow the playlist Sustainable House and Building with Lime. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you again soon.